What's up everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI tool series and in this video we'll be talking about AWS Kiro, more like Japanese, Kiro. So I was lucky enough to get the early access for Kiro and I've been playing around with it and I have pretty strong views about it, especially when it comes to competition. So let's take a step back, shall we? So after Cursor, my main problem with most of the AI editor or smart editors have been like, they all provide the same kind of experience, the wipe coding experience. For example, let's talk about Firebase Studio by Google, web-based, same experience. All you can do is share workspaces, so that's their strongest offering. Uh, if you talk about Lovable, they have pretty much the same experience, the same VS Code experience uh, within web and same wipe coding experience. If you talk about Replit, pretty much the same. If you talk about Bolt, pretty much the same. If you talk about V0, although it's like sitting upon Wurzel's ecosystem, but pretty much the same experience when it comes to wipe coding, generating files, no biggie. But I think within the midst of all this noise, AWS really understood the assignment and it sprinkled like the topping of agentic uh, you know, ideation and agentic workflows and stuff. So that's the best thing about Kiro. It's like an agentic IDE and it works. Like a lot of people, if you're a developer and you're working in a development environment, you would want to follow the same steps that you follow within your workplace, right? Uh, whenever you're assigned a task, it comes from a product definition. Then it gets translated into requirements. Then those requirements get translated into tasks. So Kiro basically offers you the same kind of workflow. So this is how it looks like. This is the whole look and feel. You can clone your repository and you can also open a new project. So let's go ahead and I've created one. Here we go. Okay. Okay, I trust you. So here we have two experiences. So first is the wipe experience. And I think you're pretty much accustomed to that. You're pretty much, you know, you have used it quite a lot, uh, you know, in cursor and replit, lovable and whatnot. But this experience, which is the spec experience, which says plan first, then build, create requirements and design before coding start. So that's the actual thing. And let me just walk you through the whole, you know, before you get lost. So this is where our spec file would go. Whenever we would prompt Kiro, it would create a first file, which is known as a spec file. And we'll do that in a while. Then you can also create agentic hooks. And we will talk about this. And this is probably the biggest offering by Kiro. For example, you can create workflow hooks on saved documents. Whenever you save a file, it should update your documentation. It should update your test files. And you can go crazy with it. Then agentic steering is basically uh, just an add-on, like a more detailed spec file, not a spec file, a detailed markdown file, which actually tells the model underneath, which is Cloud Sauna 3.7. I'm just a bit biased. So it tells your model how to steer your project. What are like, you know, maybe your coding requirements or maybe your coding best practices so you can add all of that in here and this is my favorite mcp servers and you can hook as many as you can so i really like this division i really like this work experience all right now let's go through the spec experience so i'm going to put in my prompt which says generate a fast api based to-do list enter and here's our main chat panel. So now, as you can see, it's first creating the requirements.md. So let's wait for it. All right, so our requirements.md file has been created. And as you can see, the chat panel paused and it's actually just highlighting us to move to the design phase. So which means we get to review the requirement document that it generated. And once we do, once we click this button, then it's going to move on to design phase. Now we really like this experience of the whole spec file. You have the requirement tab, you have the design tab, you have a task list tab. So here we have the introduction, a RESTful API for a to-do list application. 
then it also adds up user stories. And as you can see, if I highlight it, I can chat about it and I can even edit it. So it's pretty verbose. I have all these, you know, requirements in a series of user stories, which is great. That's exactly like a product requirement definition or a PRD, uh, which if you if you're aware of it. So it's pretty cool. And let's move ahead to design phase. OK, the design.md file has been created yet again. The chat panel paused and now it's prompting us about move to the implementation phase. So now if I move here, I have all these cool definitions about, uh, you know, the whole design phase of your project. You have an overview, you have an architecture and you can even view it like this, I think in a more, you know, MD file format just to show you the detail it went onwards to create the whole thing so you have the client your client routes service layer sql alchemy models and sqlite database and then you have all these you know data model definitions and stuff so it's pretty detailed so let's go ahead and move to the implementation phase uh, it would start creating the task list for us so here, if you if you just take a quick look, we have all the details like what kind of stuff we would actually need. Uh, create to do's, get to do's, get to do's by ID. So all these definitions exist and the implementation phase or the task looks phase would actually build upon these definitions and would actually give us the uh, I think it's done. Yep, it's done. Finalize the task list. So now we can see all these tasks. And the best thing about it, you can even run these tasks individually. So just like the start task. So this is create a directory structure for models, services, routes, and database components. So if I hit this, now my task is queued. And uh, we can wait for it to complete. And we can even, you know, start these other tasks and they would all run in parallel, which is kind of the, the best thing ever. Now our task is in progress and there you can see all the stuff that it will be creating. So this is the experience that I'm talking about. It's pretty engaging. It's different than, you know, what we have seen traditionally in most of the AI editors, which provide you a more like a wipe coding wipe wipe coding wipe <laughs> all right so i think the very first task is completed we now have a directory uh which has you know a database folder models schemas services routes and if we go here so this is the main cura experience and this is the traditional uh you know waste code experience where you can actually explore files so if I squash this very first folder is like the dot Kiro folder, and this would have all the specs files. So whenever you prompt Kiro, all those prompts would be, you know, uh, would actually go through these three stages, requirement, design, and then task list. And all these uh, files would be available over here. Then you have this app experience and here you have your database models, routes, and everything. So this looks pretty neat and pretty clean. We can go back to our, you know, main cure experience and over here in the task list, let's close this and we can go ahead and, you know, uh, either click here, which, which is like update tasks. It would refresh all the tasks after you prompt and, or you can, you know, uh, select these individually and it would go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, update your existing repository accordingly to these tasks. So this is the, this is a pretty neat experience. So I'm pretty sure all these, uh, you know, AI editors would eventually catch up to this experience. Uh, but the fact that you have to give your kudos to, uh, you know, AWS Kiro for this, because this is the most closest you can get to a, you know, pure developer experience. All right. Once you're done generating a few tasks, you can go ahead and generate steering documents for your repository. So it's going to go ahead and scan your repository, read all the files, read your MD, just like here, requirement.txt main, because we only have one, uh, you know, main file, uh, which is the main fast API file. It would go ahead and create, you know, certain documents, which are also MD 
uh, MD files or markdown files. And in those documents, it would have all the, you know, niche best practices that you can follow or you can propose your team to follow. So here we go. So we have, it's generating a few. So let's go ahead and see the tech one. Uh, actually, let it just complete first. All right, so we have the very first file, which is uh, the structure file. It generates all the structure, which is like more like the document structure, uh, the architecture that it's based on, files, and you know, code organizational rules. Very high level. Then you have tech, all the technology that is being used within your repository, along with the very first steps that you need to follow. Just like you know, main documentation page, how to run the application, how to run the tests. Then you come to uh, you know the product overview. Since we only ran one task, our, our repository is pretty lean. So here we have all the uh, stuff about uh, you know fast API to do list uh, project, and you, we can add our own in terms of you know product if you if you want something to be uh, you know according to your rules, according to your best practices, so you can have that. Perfect. So let's talk about agent hooks. So this is my favorite. So you can actually, uh, right here, you can create uh, an agent hook. And whenever the event occurs, prompt is sent to the agent, the prompt that you'll write here, and Kiro makes the update. For example, whenever you save a particular file, you only have a few tasks to do. Either you would want to update the documentation, something that we talked about at the start of the video, either it would be documentation, tests, or, you know, maybe linting. So here uh, you can say, uh, update my documentation and this is the code. Let's hit enter. And it's including, you know, uh, all these details within the steering documents. And then it will be creating a hook for us. And here we go. Uh, we have Python, Python documentation sync. This is our prompt. And we can select either on file created, file saved is probably the one that we need. And we can also, you know, filter or select the file paths, which is kind of, kind of awesome. So currently I want it for all files or maybe, you know, I can select, uh, you know, all the files within my app folder. So we're good to go. So uh, as you can see now, uh, you know, our whole experience on the left is shaping. Uh, we have agent steering documents. We have our very own on file save agent hook and we have our spec files right here. So pretty cool. All right. So one thing uh, that's left, which is MCP servers. Now, I think a standard MCP server would be GitHub, right? but you can enable more than those. So currently I have this one. Uh, so this is like the main configuration file. If you're seeing my videos for a long time, we've been working a lot with MCP servers. So I added this particular server, which is more like an AWS diagram MCP server. So it takes your prompt and it generates a diagram for you. Uh, AWS icon based. So you get a very nice looking, you know, first impression of your architecture. So currently, as you can see, I had to go through a series of, you know, dependencies to actually enable it, but currently it's connected. And just to show you, if I go ahead and type in something like generate an AWS diagram for a serverless uh, architecture. So it's going to think for a while and then it's going to finalize a few tools. All right, so our diagram is generated. Let's go ahead and this is our serverless diagram. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, it's kind of hard to really get the right icons and the right, you know, logos for the internal AWS service. So this is where MCP server comes in. It sort of places itself between the prompt and actual execution. It would actually provide you the right kind of context. So here we have a nice looking uh, lean architecture for 
our serverless architecture. So we have a bunch of lambdas, uh, DynamoDB, and you know SQSQ. So probably I just I didn't really you know uh, gave it an actual use case. So I just asked it you know maybe uh, generate a lean application. So it just you know put together a not functional lambda API function and data processing. And they're just intertwined alongside with it. Just wanted to give you a good demonstration of how this, the whole thing works. So you can have a lot of different things. And when I say an agentic IDE, this is what I mean. Uh, obviously, you run through specs, you run through processes, you can generate hooks, and you can automate a lot of stuff using agent hooks, agent steering, and MCP servers collectively. All right, so this is AWS Kiro for you guys. Do let me know what you guys think about it. I was very excited when it was released and I, I was even more excited when I started using it because it really resonates with the way I work uh, and it really resonates with the processes I go through every single day. So that was the exciting part. Uh, and obviously it offers you something different, something, something completely different to what we're used to. Uh, so yeah, uh, drop your comments in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.